What's up, everybody? It's Grim, your YouTube Wrestling Figures Heavyweight Champion. And I'm looking at my Twitter timeline from last night, seeing all the tweets that you guys made about Raw. Salty, salty, so very salty. Why are you guys so salty? People are pissed. Everybody thinks Raw sucked the dick. And I'm like, am I watching the same program? It wasn't the best episode of all time, not by far, but it wasn't that bad. It didn't shit the bed. But according to my Twitter timeline, it's drizzling diarrhea. Why the hell? <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. Like, you guys, you can't expect the fucking fully loaded pay-per-view quality episode of Monday Night Raw every week. We gotta have that little bit of filler in the middle to get us where we gots to go. And where do we gots to go? Night of Cockwagons. Coming up soon. So, how is WWE building us to Night of Cockwagons? Well, the first thing they do is they're gonna have friggin' Rim Job and Rollins come out to the ring, and he's all like, a blah, 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 and the crowd is all like, BORING! And I'm like, really? Yeah, the fucking show just started! You haven't even fucking heard a word come flying out of his fucking face yet, and people are already chanting boring! <sighs> oh well, I can't deal. We want champ boring, champ boring. It's your right to do it, your right to hate it, and if you hate it, good for you! <laughs> But anyway, I want to hear what Seth Rollins has to say. I'm interested in my WWE and United States Champion. So, Fuckface is running his mouth about how he's special. He's a certain kind of special. He's a special kind of special. Is he Eugene kind of special? Holy fuck. Could you imagine Eugene in the WWE today with the United Butthurt Bitches of America all fucking fended by everything? Oh my god, people would be pissed. Anyway, alright, let's get on to this. So... Rollins is talking shit about how he's feuding with Cena and he's feuding with Sting and he wants his fucking statue back. And Sting, face painted face, flies up on the Titan Tron and he has the statue and he's like, if you want it, come and get it. Ah, it's showtime, folks. You know, all that kind of crap. And then out comes Seamus. And I'm like, what the fuck is this rooster headed prick want? Fucker in the bank comes flying his face out here talking to Rollins about how. At Night of Cockwagons, not only is Rollins going to have two matches, but if shit miscatches in, three matches. Could you imagine? I don't know. I think it's going to be cool as fuck. But spoiler alert, Sting's going to win the championship. So if Sheamus is going to cash in, he's going to have to do it on the stinker. And then after commercial break, Triple H says that to get ready for the Night of Cockwagons, we're going to have to put you in two matches, Rollins. I thought that fucking Triple H and Rollins were friends. Why the fuck would Big Big Bitch put him in two matches? Right? Anyway, so now Rollins is going to have to fight Ryback, and Rollins is going to have to fight in a tag match with the New Day against Cena and the Primetime Players. Now, at the end of the show, we'll talk about those matches in a minute, but at the end of the show, right, you see Stink up on the big screen once again with the solid gold chocolate statue, and the stinker is like, ooh, something stinks. <laughs> I'm like, Stink said something stinks? It's the garbage truck, and the stinker pushes the fucking statue into the garbage truck, and the compactor crushes the fuck out of it. Seth Rollins was pissed. Rightfully so. I'd be mad too, some bitch crushed my motherfucking statue. And I'm like, I don't know why people are shitting on this. Smashing shit is awesome. I like to see shit get smashed, and we got to see legit the fucking statue get crushed. It was cool. And Seth Rollins is pissed. There's a reason for the fight. They're doing it right, people. This is wrestling. So let's talk about the other shit real quick, because Rollins rules tonight, having the opening segment, a match in the middle, a match at the end. The motherfucker fights Ryback, and of course, Stink pops up on the screen and causes Rollins to lose. Now, first of all, back in the day when the Grimster was just a little grimmy, right? When you had the WWE Champion go up against the Intercontinental Champion, that was like WrestleMania main event quality horseshit. Hogan versus Warrior. I mean, that didn't happen very often. I remember Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels. You know, uh, that was like a Survivor Series main event. That was pay-per-view main event. No, you're getting this match in the middle of motherfucking Raw. And people are like, ah, this sucks, this is boring, let's see what else is on. What? what you, your champion and your IC champion are going at it. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to rant and rave. Haters going to hate, right? Okay, anyway. So, Rollins loses to the Ryback. How does Rollins lose to the Ryback? It was all because of that face-painted fucker stink. And then, at the end of the show, Rollins' team loses. But Rollins didn't take the pinfall, fortunately. Super Cena, brrr, I never lose. <laughs> he pins Kofi Kingston. Kofi Cockwagon. 
And I'm thinking to myself, you have six motherfuckers in this match. Was it really necessary for Super Cena to gain the pinfall and win? No less, his team could lose. Tight ass O'Neal could have fucking taken the fall and lost the damn match. Who gives a shit? But I think the point was they wanted Rollins to lose. Rollins loses, Cena wins, people are pumped or people are pissed. And you know what else is funny as balls to me? Did you notice Stink never actually appeared on the stage or in the ring? He was only on the Titan Tron? Spoiler alert. They filmed all that fucking shit last week. Sting was home on the couch washing his ass. He wasn't even there. It was all pre-recorded. Hilarious. Oh, and also during the main event, some fucking dumb fan decides to jump the barricade and walks down the entrance aisle with Seth Rollins. Where the fuck was security? Had that shit cricket wanted to hurt Rollins, he had ample time to do so. Security, you shit the bed, you bastards. You should all be fired. It was funny as fuck for me to see, but don't ever do that shit because you're going to get arrested. Or, or, or the wrestlers, they have fucking full right to kick the shit out of you and you deserve it. A lot of people are pissed about this Rusev, Summer, Dolph Ziggler, Lana angle. And especially the fact that Lana is now injured and not even on the episode last night. People were pissed. Yes, that is correct. And everybody was shitting all over this angle. It was like fucking days of our lives out there. Soap opera, some bitch. But like I said, I like this because this is what people fight about in real life. Pussy. Dudes fight over chicks all the time. This mimics real life. This is exactly what would happen in real life. Dudes fighting over girls. It happens backstage. Why the fuck can't it happen in the ring? So, <laughs> I kind of feel bad for Rusev. Only for the fact that the some bitch is getting pushed down to Santino status. Especially with some Rick calling him Lil Roo Roo. <laughs> How fucking funny was that? I don't know, everybody shit all over this segment. I didn't think it was all that bad. Um, well, so much happened on this Raw. It was loaded up. Uh, the, the Miz fought Cesaro, and I really thought that Cesaro should have won the damn match, but it wound up being, like, what, a double DQ or something? I don't fucking care. Cesaro should have won, too stupid. And the Big Show was there shitting around his fat roll face, and it with the Miz, and no, just go away, Big Show. Go away. Randy Orton fought Sheamus. Nobody cares. People are pissed. Why the fuck are these two fighting again? And of course they put on a decent match. But nobody cares. Because there's no fucking reason for them to be fighting. At least Drew Seven Dolph are fighting over pussy. These two douchebags ain't fighting over dick. I don't get it. But the important part at the end of the match was Randy Orton gets attacked by the Wyatt family. Could this mean that Randy Orton is going to be the third mystery partner? <laughs> yeah. If you want people to be pissed. <laughs> Uh, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, they went up against the Ascension. I would think that Gay Wyatt would want some of the Ascension, but uh, they, they mopped the floor with them like they were jobbers. It wasn't too bad of a match. It was, it was mopped the fucking floor with the bastards. One of my favorite fucking segments was the fact that Edge and Christian are back. I love Edge. Edge is like my second favorite of all time. And I hate Christian. The only reason I really hate Christian is because when Edge had to retire, they tried to make Christian replace him. Before that, Christian was cool as fuck. And now, all right, Christian's gone. He's retired. All right, I don't like him again. But in the meantime, they're in the middle there. Fuck Christian. But Edge and Christian being back was cool as shit. And they had their kazoos. And they were playing New Day Sucks in the kazoos. <laughs> <laughs> Classic shit, right? In come the Dudley Boys, makes a funny-ass segment. New Day's nail it, Dudley Boys are nailing it, Edge and Christian back on the show because they're going to be on some podcast afterwards with some guy who blocked me on Twitter. And it was fucking awesome segment. I enjoyed it. And then, oh wait, there was a Divas match. The Divas revolution continues as Paige takes on Sasha Banks, right? And there was controversy in this match. Because first of all, PCB and, and the Team Bad are out there and all kinds of shit, distractions, this, that, and the other thing. But Sasha rolls up Paige for the one, two, three. But Sasha Banks' shoulders were down too. And everybody's lighting it up. They're like, no, no, no. But 
That's what's supposed to happen in wrestling. You know, the controversy. You know, what the fuck happened here? That makes wrestling interesting to me. And I thought it was a good way to end the match. Because then it's like, it doesn't make Paige look too bad. And it doesn't make Sasha look too strong. But Sasha gets to win. Paige gets lost. Paige could put anybody over and still be awesome. Not bad. There's so much stuff that happened on this episode. Um, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, asshole Apple Eaton Owens challenged Ryback for the Intercontinental title. That looks like that's coming up at Night of Cockwagons. That should be cool, right? They'll probably give Owens the fucking Intercontinental title. So, that's gonna be kinda cool. And then, um, oh, Charlotte does not want to wait till Night of Cockwagons to face Nikki Bella. Charlotte wants to face her next week on Raw so she can end the fucking streak before the streak becomes the streak that beats AJ's streak. You follow that? Because I didn't. <laughs> uh, so Charlotte is going to go up against Nikki Bella next week, and I don't think Charlotte's going to win the belt. No, no, no. Not going to happen. What did you guys think of Raw? I thought it was solid. I don't know why everybody was shitting all over it on Twitter. You know, uh, people get mad. I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys expect. It's a wrestling show. It's the middle, middle of a pay-per-view just to build up. They put on decent matches. The WWE always entertains. It's wrestling, guys. Enjoy it for what it is. And if you don't like it, watch something else, like my YouTube channel and stuff, because I, I do funny things. I thank you guys for watching. Please like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe for more Crimp Out!